I'm Scott O. Miller. It's the 14th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Today is Monday and mostly a quiet morning. Lots of work. I'm very far behind. The videos are way far behind and my foot still hurts. So that's why I'm doing all the recordings here in the courtyard with the new setup, trying to get as many done all at once as I can, which is working pretty well. So I'm hoping that this looks and sounds good and you guys like this. And I mentioned this, we're going to be moving pretty soon. And so I'm hoping that this gives me a chance to uh, show off this courtyard because I, I do like the lighting. I like this kind of setup that we have here. It's not the best, but it's something that I, I, I like getting to use it. And I'm only going to get to use it so much more. That and the church, which uh, is nearby. I wish I could uh, keep recording there. It's such a great location, but it's very hard for me to use. I'm really looking forward to the new spaces. Okay, the only real big thing I had happen today did have coffee this afternoon with Ron, one of our uh, viewers here on the show. Hey, Ron, shout out to you. Um, we had coffee here in town uh, for a bit of the afternoon. Other than that, I was in the office working all day. That's just, it was just an office day for me. So nothing big there. Today, we're going to talk about in just a second, um, this kind of, uh, I've had a lot of questions recently about moving money into the country. So I'm going to try to address that a little bit. I'm not an expert on that, but I'm going to address it a little bit. And, um, and in general, I've had a lot of questions about houses and um, um, businesses, of course. And one of the things that's consistently happening is I feel things are happening out of order. There's a cart before the horse situation. And we're going to talk about that on today's video right after I mentioned that you need to like and subscribe. That's how we keep the video going. There's just a button down there. Just hit like. It only takes a second. If you're on a TV, it's like up, over, like, thumbs up, whatever. Um, <laughs> make sure you subscribe. I'll turn on the bell for notifications. Those things really make a difference. They tell uh, YouTube that this is a show that you care about. Uh, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, I'm going to have a link down in the description below. I'll put the link here. That comes directly to me. It's kind of like Patreon, uh, but a little easier to, for me to use. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, or you have some comments about the show, go ahead and put them down there. For example, my father talked about how great my videography is recently. Comments like that are very welcome. Bring them on and, uh, and also always share on social media. Okay, today, what is, what is it? What are we talking about? So when you're looking at moving to Nicaragua, I get this a lot. And the question that came up today, and these are, these are public questions. I'll, maybe I'll remember the link to pop it up above. Do I see it? Do I? Do I? I don't know. And uh, the question was, I need to move X amount of dollars into Nicaragua. I've talked to a lawyer. They're willing to set me up with an escrow. Okay. So my question is, and I asked this and I haven't read all the comments yet, so they may have responded to me already, but the que my question is, why would you want to move money into Nicaragua before you got here? And this is similar to the question I ask other people, because so many people I talk to are like, well, I want to buy a house before I move. I want to start up a business before I move. And these, to me, are weird reactions. If you were moving to the United States, if you lived anywhere in the world, or you're just somewhere in the United States and you're moving to a new city, I'm going to assume none of you live in Pittsburgh. You are moving to Pittsburgh tomorrow. If you live in Pittsburgh, imagine I mentioned Cleveland. You're heading into Pittsburgh and you know you're going to be there somewhere between two and six months from now. Would you call a lawyer in Pittsburgh and try to send them money to hold for you ahead of time so that you can spend it when you get to Pittsburgh? Would you have people in Pittsburgh go sight unseen and find you a house? a house that you plan to purchase as your permanent residency from here going forward and, and let them choose everything, the suburb that you're going to be in, how far from the city you'll be, what your view is going to be like, how big it's going to be. Of course, you'll give them information, but they're going to fundamentally make all the choices. Maybe they'll take pictures of it for you. They'll walk around with a GoPro. You'll have some feel for it. You'll have some input, of course, but sight unseen, you're going to buy a house. I have sight unseen rented an apartment, but I've never sight and seen, I have. Okay, I've actually sight and seen bought a house. I've done some of these things. I have very specific reasons why I did them and I didn't exactly do it sight and seen. I had not seen the house, but I'd been in the country and been uh, right in front of the house. I just hadn't been through it, okay? So it's, and, and I had lived in the place, right? It was quite a bit different than sight unseen, just not that house. And I had people I knew. It was not random third party people. It was people I knew for a long time went through and, and did a lot of the, the first person looking at the house for me. So I overcame a lot of this through a lot of work and connections and years of research. So, and then the other thing is, would you then say, okay, I'm, so I'm moving to Pittsburgh and now I have a house. I'm going to start up a business based on what I think people in Pittsburgh are looking for. All of these things sound really strange when you're saying about doing them to Pittsburgh. You would say, well, you should rent first. 
right? Get to Pittsburgh or stay in a hotel, but get to Pittsburgh, spend some time, find suburbs that you like, find a neighborhood that you like, find a view that you like, test the commute to where you're going to work, figure out where you're going to work, right? Make those decisions. I'm sure that can change, but you know, work with something and spend some time getting to know the community so that when you say, well, I want to start a business, I want to start a bakery, right? You know how many bakeries are already there. You know what they're doing, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And you know how people are reacting to them. Are, is no one going to the bakeries? Maybe they're not making the right food. Is everyone going? Maybe they know something you don't know, right? You need to get there, observe the local environment, apply what you observe to your expertise, your knowledge, your interest, and see how you might be able to compete in that market with a business. Um, or if you want to buy an existing business, you don't want to compete. You just want to invest in something that's already there. See firsthand what's working, what interests you, who, which people you want to work with, all those kinds of things. All of these, there's a common thread. And that is get there, make no investment, and figure it out. Now, I'm not saying you should figure it out on your own. Of course, ask questions. Feel free to ask questions here. But there's no need to do any of these things before you're in country. I'm sure there's going to be some exceptions, but in general, there's no need to move money into the country until after you are here. Pull the money from wherever it's coming from. Don't push it from abroad. Make sure it's coming into your account. Now, things you may want to do with money. Of course, you may want to invest in a business. You may want to invest in a house. You may want to rent an apartment, buy a car, all those things. When doing so, you can pull that money while you're here. You don't have to have it here ahead of time. In fact, that is insanely dangerous and you should not do that. When you're here, you can have your own bank account and know where that money's going. Or that payment could be made directly to someone who's, say you're buying a car, it could go directly to Casa Pellis and buy that car. If you're gonna buy a house, there's a really good chance, especially if you're from the United States or Canada, that you may be buying it from someone who's in the United States or Canada now. That money will transfer in the US, not in Nicaragua. So you need to think about if you move that money into Nicaragua, you may have to move it back to the United States to do the transaction. Don't move it unless you need it. Don't move it until it's time, just in time movement. So that's the first thing. Don't move money just to move it. Make sure you have a very discreet purpose and reason for moving it. Why would you move it? Make sure you know. Next, why would you buy a house when you haven't been here yet? That honestly to me is bonkers and yet it's one of the most common things i have no idea what drives people to want to own a house in a place that they haven't been i understand i love nicaragua i want to own a house in nicaragua i do own a house in nicaragua but i lived in nicaragua first i rented for a while made big changes in my decisions i visited other places thought i had found the right thing made big changes to that right i, I put in a bit of time researching by living and spending a lot of time. If you watch my throwbacks, three years ago, I was spending a lot of time in San Juan del Sur. I had the advantage of having lived in Granada. So the, the ideas that you often get in San Juan del Sur, that that's the only place, never, never bubbled up that way to me. Right. So I had the advantage of seeing San Juan del Sur as someone who had lived in Nicaragua and had a pretty good exposure. I'd been to most of the cities in the country before going to San Juan. So when I went to San Juan, there was a whole bunch of, wow, I love this. I love the restaurants. I love that I can walk around. I love, you know, there's an expat community that I can I can get involved in. All that sounded great. Then when I spent more time, looked into it more, looked into other options, I said, you know what? All that extra spending, uh, that isn't for me. The, I won't get as much into the Nicaraguan culture. It's not quite what I'm looking for. The problem that I have is I enjoy the expat facility, uh, community. But I also enjoy the, the Nicaraguan community. The question is not do I enjoy one or the other, but which one I enjoy more. And I enjoy Nicaraguan community more. So that's what I focus on. That's why I want to live in a place where I'm in the middle of a Nicaraguan community. And then I go to an expat community rather than the other way around. But that could be different for you. But those are things you only really experience by going to a place and seeing what it's like. What is that particular community like? What are those particular restaurants like? If you buy a house and you say, well, it's right in the middle of all the restaurants, it may be in the middle of a bunch of restaurants you don't like. Things as simple as that. You need to rent, get to know an area, and then buy a house that makes sense for you. Not only is that the only way you could possibly make a good decision about a house, right? That's significant. Right now, if you know an area, you can buy a house sight unseen with reasonable uh, assurances that you're making a good decision. But if you're buying without having actually been to a place at all, the, the ability for you to make a good decision borders on zero. You're basically guessing based off of Wikipedia information and a few pictures. Getting a vibe for what a town feels like when you're there 
is not something you can do remotely, not very well. Getting an idea of which houses are in places that are going to make you excited or which ones are going to take a long time to get somewhere. Yes, you can send someone driving with a GoPro on the dashboard and get some feel for that. And that's perfect for a rental where you're not making a commitment. But if you're buying in a place like Nicaragua, you really want to know that you're buying the right place. Most people who are buying in Nicaragua, this is just a generality, but most foreigners who are buying here are buying a retirement home or at least a permanent home that they will eventually retire in. That means you're not looking to buy and sell. You need to make a good decision now. It's not like when you're 22 years old and you're just buying a starter home and you know you're going to sell it and move on later. This is a place you want to invest in probably. So you want to make good decisions about it and not treat it as a trivial matter that you can just let someone else basically guess for you. More importantly, right now, and this is especially true over the course of time that I've been doing this vlog, the economy here is extremely poor, especially in real estate. If you buy a house, two things are likely to be true. The first is that you are almost certainly going to overpay for it. Not dramatically necessarily, but you're probably going to overpay. You are not Nicaraguense, I assume. Some of you watching the show are Nicaraguense, in which case you know this doesn't apply to you. But if you're not Nicaraguense and you buy a house, chances are you're going to overpay just because they're able to figure out that you're not a local and they're going to have a better negotiating position than you are. And you probably have a little bit of flexibility on the monetary side. They probably have a little bit of flexibility on the just wait and for another buyer side. That means that chances are they will wait until you give them a price that's a little bit high for the market. And that's fine. You will probably overpay by a little bit just in general. And I don't mean getting ripped off or anything of the sort. I'm simply meaning they have some bargaining power for the majority of the people who are watching this channel. When you're looking to buy a house, you are simply in a poor bargaining position. It's part of the game. It's not the end of the world. That means, however, that when you go to sell, you will not be in the same position. You will be in another bad negotiating position or a neutral one. If you are selling to another foreigner, you are probably in a neutral position. If you are selling to a local, you're probably in a negative one. So you may take a hit again simply by having a less than perfect uh, value uh, negotiating power for your house. You will also have the taxes on the house, of course, that's a thing. But also, and this is really big, right now, the real estate market is terrible. Houses stay on the market for years possibly decades. When we go out and look at houses, we're often seeing houses that have been there for so long that they are falling apart. Now, it's a hot climate. We're in the tropics. Things fall apart much faster than other places. So even if you leave it for just two or three years, there's a good chance your roof may be gone. But it's very real that you may be stuck with whatever you buy today for a very long time. Is the real estate market going to come back? Of course it is. Is there going to be an opportunity to sell it someday? Of course there is. It may be a very long time and significantly impact your life. So don't buy a house with the assumption that you're just going to turn around and sell it, especially if you're looking in some place like San Juan del Sur, where the market has been hit so much more dramatically. Yes, there's many more houses on the market there and more of them turn over, but they're able to turn over more because there's more houses, not because more, not because a greater percentage of houses are turning over. So be aware that being in that zone where you get the most marketing that suggests that there may be a good housing market actually is what we see the worst market in the country. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy there. That doesn't mean you shouldn't see it as an investment. It means you need to be wary. It is the most heavily hit by the change in tourism. It is the one with the most surplus of homes on the market. It has by far the most surplus, possibly the majority of surplus of houses designed around expats, which is mostly what people on this channel will be looking to buy in the country. So when we talk about the economic hit to real estate and to tourism, it is hitting there so much more than anywhere else in the country. The rest of the country feels it, but San Juan del Sur takes the brunt of it. They've been really brutalized in the current economy. So that affects your buying decisions. Starting a business before you get here. Yes, the idea of starting a business early could make sense. If it's going to make money, why not make money ahead of time? We've talked about this before on the channel, though. The reality is right now, and possibly ever, you need to expect that businesses that you start in Nicaragua are not going to be making money. If you are going to make money at a business here, chances are it's going to be a very long time. It's going to be a huge investment, and it's going to be doing things like putting in your own labor, bringing some very specific expertise to the table, having a fair amount of investment capital. There's a lot of things that you can do that give you an edge, but if you don't have 
all of those things, there's a really good chance you will be losing money instead of making it, which can be fine. Losing money on investments here could be part of your strategy for presidency. We'll talk about that some other time, and that's just fine. But again, go in with your eyes open and absolutely don't do it before you move here, right? Get here. That's the first step. You don't need any amount of money to come here. If you have a bank account in the US or Canada or Western Europe, get here, bring a good credit card, bring a good debit card, maybe two or three of each, so you can keep them in a safe, whatever. You can rent a house, you can go to an ATM, get out enough cash to operate anything you need except for like buying a car and that you'll take a little bit of time to orchestrate bringing in money, no big deal. Nothing you should be doing when you first move to Nicaragua or anywhere should require you to have a large lump sum of cash in those first days. Once you've been around for a few weeks, maybe you're ready to make decisions. Probably not, but maybe. Once you've been around for a few months, you're probably ready to start making decisions, at which time you'll have time to have a fair understanding of how much money you're going to need, when you're going to need to move it, where you need to move it. Do you need to spend it in the US, spend it in Canada, spend it in Nicaragua? You'll figure that out. How much in each place? when all of that and you may not need a bank or anything you may be able to pay directly to where it needs to go or in that time maybe you've opened your own bank account here simply move the money into your bank account there's no big deal you talk to your bank talk to your other bank and make the transfer it is not complicated there's not like this big barrier to moving money into the country there are some delays and some paperwork if you're moving money over ten thousand dollars then yes you have to go through all the money laundering paperwork and all that and that's annoying but everybody has to do it everywhere and it just is what it is other than that this is a normal banking country and you're able to move money around from bank to bank easily anytime don't do it before you need it you will get burned if you are moving your citizenship into the country and need to move all of your assets in you will not be doing that from abroad. You will get here, work through the process for years, most likely, get your citizenship and tackle those problems at that time. Do not try to tackle them early. In all of these cases, don't put the cart before the horse. There's no reason to do that. I'm not exactly sure why this is such a broad cultural thing. My belief is that the marketing from San Juan del Sur has pushed this really hard, especially during COVID. This idea that you need to shift money down into their bank accounts, of course, into the hands of their friends or people they recommend. Um, they want you to buy houses that they're trying to sell remotely without you seeing them first, maybe without you having your own lawyer to check over the paperwork. They're trying to provide you, the lawyer who works for them, to do all of the transactions. And they want to encourage you to start a business that they recommend or they have an idea about or just is in their area all before you get here. Why? logically because they want to capture that revenue and that's their business right if you work in san juan del sur and you provide services to extra and Harrow's, you need them to spend that money for you to make money and especially during covid they have to do something to get that happening when you can't get here but we're getting past covid now right and you don't need to be doing any of those things and you don't need to see the world as san juan del sur centric which we talked about earlier a couple days ago you do not have to do anything before you're ready take your time be patient impatience is a destroyer of businesses it's a destroyer of personal lives that is how people lose their fortunes take your time do it carefully don't get impatient yes we all want to get our dream house as early as possible we all want to just show up and walk in the front doors and have everything ready for us it's not realistic even if you have tens or hundreds of millions of dollars the amount you will potentially lose by trying to push too quickly and making a decision where you are blindly buying your dream home, blindly setting up your dream home, having no time to make any decisions, hire construction, everything's at, at best, you're gonna overpay. And at worst, nothing's gonna be made the way that you expected it. You're gonna get a completely different experience than you were dreaming of, especially the longer you're away, the more things that you do before you get here, the more you're gonna envision one thing and encounter another. Not that it's necessarily bad, but it's not what you were thinking. You will skew off more and more from reality as you work from your imagination rather than working from the reality here on the ground. There are so many things that are so simple when you're here or anywhere and can simply look and see how things work. Oh, there's no road in front of my house. Of course, the truck can't get there to deliver the water. Or, oh, I didn't realize that we were this close to a siren. I can hear that at this time of day. That's a problem for this other reason. Oh, I didn't realize that there's a building right over there with internet. How can I get the internet to me when they don't want to do, I could talk to him and trench through the ground. 
There's all these things. You just have to be here to solve simple problems. And this is true no matter where you live, no matter where you're going, that it's Nicaragua has nothing to do with it. But somehow, because it's Nicaragua, there is this marketing, I believe, coming from San Juan del Sur that is trying to convince people to give them this feeling of panic. I, I don't know exactly how they do it. It's brilliant, whatever they're doing. They're managing to universally create a sense of panic where everyone is trying to send money and make huge life decisions that are